Don't be deceived. This is happening to millions of people in the world. James 1 verse 13 to 15 Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempteth he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Temptation is not something that you can avoid. What I am saying is that there is no way temptation will not come into your life. When facing temptation, the Bible says you should never say it is God tempting you, because God doesn't tempt anyone. If God doesn't tempt people, who is the mastermind of these temptations you face? Satan. The devil is the mastermind. Now a big mistake people make is attempting to abuse the grace of God and repentance. They are tempted and then go ahead and commit the sin and justify that sin on the basis, I can commit this sin and repent later. And then they go ahead and commit the sin. I say this from experience, because at points in my own life, I have found myself justifying falling into temptation, knowing that I can repent later. But this is a big mistake. The sad thing is that there are Christians who rationalize falling into temptation and falling into sin with this way of thinking. I can commit sin and ask for forgiveness later. I can fall into temptation and then repent later. But there is a great warning we all need to keep in mind. Galatians 6 verse 7 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Bible says it is what you sow that you will reap. You cannot sow into sexual immorality and expect to reap in godliness. Just in the same way you can expect to sow apple seeds and reap pears. Christians are purposely going into temptation with the mind of repenting later. They say to themselves that they will repent later. It is the deceit of Satan working in them who told you there would be time for you to repent. Tomorrow is not promised. You need to run from sin right now. Any time the devil tries to tempt you, you have the word of God to use. You have the word of God to use just like Jesus did. Satan tempted Jesus, but Jesus used the word of God against him. This is what is happening to millions of people in the world. They are falling into temptation and are allowing the devil to deceive them. Christians are falling away. They keep saying they will repent later. The issue of sexual immorality is now common in the world, and it is now a regular thing. There is no decency in the world anymore. People are committing this sin and others are joining. Unmarried people are going into fornication with the mind of repenting when they want to get married. You can hardly see a fornicator who will not commit adultery when they get married. When you go into sin, you stay there because that sin will keep holding you down with the pleasures you get from it. It is only through the grace of God an individual can be liberated from sin. The devil will blind you from seeing the dangers of your sin. It is not like you will not see the risks, but the pleasures will overshadow the dangers. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 What? 
Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? All we want is God to be in our hearts, and we want God to make our bodies his temple. Why destroy God's temple with sexual immorality? Why send him far away from your life? If you commit sexual sin, you are sinning against your own body and against God. Even though experience can be a great teacher, some things are better not experienced. You don't want to experience how sexual immorality can join you to another person. This is what sexual immorality will bring to your life, and it is what is happening to millions of people in the world. Sexual immorality is a sin you can commit and ask for forgiveness. The scar that sexual immorality will leave on you even after asking for forgiveness will be huge. Many people are still battling that scar that sexual immorality has on them. They have had boyfriends or girlfriends that they have dated and committed fornication with. And although God has forgiven them for their sins, they are now dealing with attachments they created because of sexual immorality. Don't believe this lie that you can just fornicate casually and nothing happens. There is a joining together that takes place each time people fornicate, a linking together of two souls and spirits in the spirit world. People lust after many things, and they go into sin without knowing. All they are after is getting what they want. They don't care if they covet to get it. All they are after is satisfying their lust. Sin comes with lust and lays a grip on people. People lust after sex, riches, cars, or other earthly things that will perish with the earth. They lust after different meaningless stuff because of the pleasures. The devil is using the pleasures to hide the sin in these things, and they are what are blinding people from seeing the truth. People cannot see evil creeping into their lives. What are the things you have been lusting after? They are going to throw you into sin. They are darkness, and they will allow sin to make you fall. It is not too late to get a grip on these things. Are you wondering how you can do that? The Bible has an answer for you. Philippians 4 verse 8 Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Stop thinking about all these sinful things. Stop thinking about these evils in your heart. And stop lusting after earthly things. They will destroy you. What other ways did the Bible say you can get rid of these lusts in your heart? Matthew 6 verse 33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You need to seek the kingdom of God first. You need to ask God to establish his kingdom in your life first. Have you found it hard to let go of that sin that is gradually taking your life? It is because sin is hiding in the darkness, and you cannot see it because you are also in the darkness. You cannot claim to be in the light of God, and you cannot see sin. Satan can leave you alone for a while and make you think you are in the light of God. 
he will come back and tempt you again. Just in case you don't know, sin can hibernate. It will let you be and most of the time it happens when you ask for forgiveness or give your life to Christ. I know the Bible says old things have passed away, but I want to be honest with you. That statement is a process, and it is a continuous process. You must continue to stay new if you want the old to be gone. Many have asked for forgiveness and then still they went back into the same sin. Stop walking in the darkness of this world. Are you not tired of falling and rising again just to fall? Are you not tired of this same sin taking advantage of you? Don't go into sin because you think you will get the chance to repent tomorrow. You need to come into the light of God. You need to leave the darkness and let Jesus shine on you. It is an eye-opener and it is also a call from Christ that you should leave all darkness because it has nothing good to offer you but to hold you down until it destroys you. If you are walking in darkness and there is a great pit ahead of you, you can never see it. You need light. This is not even a debate. You need the light of Christ.